two, one. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to another exciting episode of Delusions of Grandeur. I am uh, uh, one of your hosts, but uh, today we figured we'd go on uh, about, uh, about a, well, this is uh, Kroll's cho uh, choice. Um, it is a 1968 uh, a film directed by Ken Hughes, uh, co uh, partly co-written by Roald Dahl, uh, who is behind, uh, behind such books as um, Willy Wonka and, uh, well, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, which eventually became Willy Wonka. Um, and uh, also it is spearheaded by Ian Fleming, uh, who... Um, is behind the Bond films, uh, uh, at least the Bond stories, um, is uh, 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 at least in novelist form. So, um, uh, uh, Kroll, uh, why did you choose uh, this particular film, uh, by the way? Well, we were doing uh, doing Cars, and uh, this was a uh, nostalgic uh, movie from my childhood. I, I loved it as a child. Um, Used to always sing the song, um, just pop my head various times, and you know I'm not sure how many times I watched it as a kid, but I haven't watched it since until uh, Friday. So, okay, um, let me see if I can't uh, read what um, IMDb sa uh, says about the film. Well, the, the film stars um, Dick Van Dyke in, in one of uh, one of the title uh, roles. Um, but uh, let's uh, a doubt on his luck. Inventor turns a broken down Grand Prix car into a fancy vehicle for his children, and they go off on a magical fantasy adventure to save their grandfather in a far off land. So that is what IMDb says about the film. Uh, let's go into first impressions. Boris, was this a first time watch for you? Uh, yes, it was. <coughs> it was the first time, but uh, I had quite a bit of fun watching this movie. <laughs> uh, I must admit, when I saw uh, on IMDb how long it was going to be, I was like, oh my, two and a half hours. But uh, it, uh, it it's actually worth the time spent watching it. Uh, it, it was uh, pretty much fun from the beginning to the end. It doesn't get boring for a single moment. So, yeah, I, I had fun watching it. Uh, <laughs> It was panned by the critics originally and did not make his money back in the theaters. I'm sorry, what did you say? It was originally. I, I said originally the, the, the critics panned it and uh, it did not make its money back in the um, in the movie theaters. Oh. You know, I'm often finding uh, uh, finding out that uh, movies that uh, tend to not like be really well liked back uh, back at the, at the time period that they were made, like years later, people think of it as a cult classic. You know, <laughs> The Wizard of Oz was played by the critics, so that if well, that's yeah, and anything... it wasn't until it it came on to the national TV that suddenly it became a cult classic. You know. <laughs> uh, Wizard of Oz is probably the, the one wow. of the most loved and, and seen movie of all times, and yeah, it was panned by the critics. So <laughs> I, don't, I don't, but I guess Ebert um, mm. did a later did criticize this movie, and he liked it um, and said it was great, great kids movie, and uh, and everything. Uh, the the original critic, I don't know who it was, but the original critic said. It should have been, it was too long. It should have only been an hour and a half. Said there was nothing imaginative about it. And blah, blah, like all those other bullshit. I'm just like, what? Did you watch the movie? <laughs> you know, it's like, <laughs> what are you talking about, man? Like the only thing they said it was good was like the visual scenes, the background scenes, you know, like 
the, the countrysides and stuff. Um, I agree the countryside was beautiful, but I wouldn't say that was the only great thing. Not at all. Very funny. It sticks in Dyke. He's hilarious. <laughs> and uh, I know this wasn't the first time watched for you. You mentioned it was a, a film of your childhood, uh, um, uh, Crow, but uh, do you remember the first time that you watched this? I, I Obviously, I didn't see it when it first came out because I was negative five. Uh, so I have no idea. I I just know watching. I watched it as a kid, watched it with my mom, um, and you know this and 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 you know the the Love Bug and the Herbie movies were, you know, all uh, nostalgic classic movies for me. You know that I loved. So um, yeah, I couldn't tell you exactly when I saw it for the first time or how many times I saw it. <laughs> I just know. I, I'm pretty sure I watched it more than once uh, as a kid and. Uh, yeah, I definitely, uh, I didn't really remember it too much, um, that, except that I loved it. And the song, like, I, you can't forget the Shitty Shitty Bang Bang, We Love You. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yeah, I, uh, I, I really enjoyed watching it again. It was, uh, brought back fond memories of, uh, watching it with my mom and stuff. And, uh, yeah, fun, okay. fun movie. Heading over to you, Tammy. Uh, was this a first time watch for you? No, I remember when I was younger watching it um, with my great grandparents. Um, it, but that it came out, I guess, on TV by then, and you know, it was something that was uh, it was a planned something that we were going to watch together. So okay. I remember that being my first time watching it. Okay. So uh, this is definitely not a first time watch for me. I'm not sure when I actually saw, uh, 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 saw this. I remember watching it as a kid, a kid having the VHS at one point in time and eventually picking it up later on uh, DVD myself. Uh, uh, so I, I honestly wasn't even aware that it was on Blu-ray or anything like that uh until recently so um it was a fairly enjoyable watch uh, 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 when i was a kid i i loved dick van dyke as a comedian i remember seeing him in mo movies like mary poppin and lieutenant robinson crusoe so um those were uh films of my childhood and uh his slapstick humor is uh, uh very well known to me so uh it, it, to me seeing him a little bit older a little bit blonde and uh having him be like this like absent-minded uh, professor of some sort you know <laughs> and, and i think films like this like i was attracted to so it's a, a very unique film. I mean, it, 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 it's, it, it has Betty Hill as a cameo, you know, as the toy maker. Uh, and he's a very good comedian himself. Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, if you know anything about British hu humor, Betty Hill is like the crux of, of like the beginning of, the the laugh out loud strange humor you know if yeah. it wasn't for Benny Hill I don't think we would have uh, uh, would have eventually had Monty Python's crew uh, and his flying circus <laughs> <laughs> uh, but uh, in any case um, so uh, we have. Uh, in the very beginning of this uh, film, a series of not, uh, well, last time we had uh, derby crashes, but uh, but uh, this time we have a, a crash, but, uh, but it's after a series of Grand Prix races that we see in the very beginning, which I didn't remember this part, uh, to be honest. It, it, I remember... Uh, I I remembered this uh, uh, most of the songs, but there were some scenes that I had totally forgotten about. Uh, about. What do y'all uh, think about this very beginning where we see how this uh, car 
uh, uh, th that shows up in a junkyard comes to be. It was uh, it was interesting to uh, see the uh, beginnings of of it. Um, you know, kind of like when you you, know, you see Christine being built um, in in the Christine movie. You know. Mm -hmm. Okay. What about you, Tammy? Did you remember this beginning? Yeah, basically, I, I remembered some of it, you know. But um, I thought it was neat to see where the, where the car came from. Okay. What about you, Boris? Uh, uh, what did you think about this very beginning? Um, did you think it was entertaining to see how the car came to be? Well, since this was the first time I watched uh, the movie, uh, I spent uh, that beginning scene pretty much trying to figure out uh, who is who and how it uh, connects to the synopsis I had read on IMDb. So uh, I didn't really uh, manage to get much from that beginning scene. Okay. Well, what that beginning uh, scene pretty much tells us is that it used to be like part of like uh, 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 some pretty decent races for, uh, from like the 1900s. I think it said like 1902, 1903. Uh, 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 like one uh, one said it was the British. Uh, I think another said it was like a, a German. Uh, a, a, a race, another it showed, uh, like three races from 07, 08, and 09, and he crashed. Yeah, in 09. and they were Grand Prix races. Uh, uh, so, um, and then I guess eventually the car uh went down a hill and uh, caught fire, and that's how, uh, and that's when it uh, uh, like. Uh, pans to uh, when the children are are in fact in the car and uh, they're imagine uh, having an imagination about what they, uh, uh, what adventures they like to think about in this car and it's sitting sure. in a junkyard and there is another man who makes an offer on uh, this junk car uh, and uh, that sets in motion uh, for the kids to eventually take the notion of making sure the car stays like around them because evidently it's like their only form of entertainment that they enjoy is going and sitting in this old ass car. Um, it's just their father just so happens to be an inventor of nothing at this moment, uh, but sure. he's got many invention, uh, 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 many so-called inventions lined up, uh, lined up, and uh, well, uh, uh, that's not the first person we meet. We actually meet a a, a very lovely lady uh, uh, by the name of Truly. Um, what do we think about this uh, young lady? Well, uh, at the very beginning, she uh, kind of comes off as a bit grumpy, maybe, but then we find out that she is actually rather nice. Okay. Uh, it's uh, funny how her car always ends up in that pod or whatever it was. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, truly, um, she always seems to be very well dressed. Um, and uh, w Tammy, what, what did you think about truly? I think she was pretty. She was. Kind of uppity, you know. We never really, uh, we never really find out why she was on that road to begin with at the beginning or where she was going. 
when she met up with the children and ended up in the pond. In fact, every time that she's heading out to their place, she never gives a reason that she's heading out there or why she would be. But... <laughs> Well, Truly was played by Sally Ann Howes. That is her name uh, as an actress. Um, and uh, eventually we find out that she is uh, the daughter of a, a sweet factory. Um, a, a, a man who uh, makes sweets in his factory. Uh, but uh, what do we think about Dick Van Dyke's character? He has a very uh, interesting name of Caractacus Potts. <laughs> um, what do we think of him as a character? Uh, Crow, what did you think about Dick Van Dyke's character, Caractacus? You're on mute. Uh, Crow, you're muted. Oh, I, I, I said you asked about the girl. Now you're asking about Dick Van Dyke. I, I never answered about the girl either. <laughs> I was waiting. Well, you were uh, mute. True, true. <laughs> uh, the, the, the girl, I like the girl. You know, I thought she was, uh, yeah, she was a little bit uh, bossy. You know, I mean, yeah, maybe the kids should have been in school. But who is, who is she to say, uh, um, you know, who is she to say uh, that she, you know that he should have her in them in school and and how he should raise the kids? You know, she's not uh, she's a little bit bossy there. But uh, I do remember a little a story my mother told me that when kids played in the street when she was growing up, people would pull over, grab the kids, spank them, bring them home, and then the parents would spank them for for doing that. So at least she didn't do that. <laughs> um, because you know, they could get killed playing in the street. So uh, it was the thing then. This was back, you know, when my mother was a kid, you know, before, uh, oh, it's child abuse um, to hit a kid uh, no matter what, which is just another whole story that's retarded. But, uh, yeah, so, I mean, she was a pretty girl. Um, obviously, the, the kids seemed to like her right away, um, even, even though they were being told to go to school. <laughs> <laughs> it seemed like they were really listening about really listening about school, um, and well, uh, she seemed to have at least at first an invested interest in, in why uh, the, uh, his kids were not in school and all that j uh, jazz, and it just seemed like sh uh, it was the norm for kids to have some sort of education. Oh well, yeah, it's always uh, been it's always been that way. But you, usually, um, you know, if you're not um, a true officer or a police officer or you know have something to do with school, I thought maybe she was a teacher. You know, at first, and that's why she was so like, you know, you know, you guys should be in school type thing. And then you know, no, she's not a teacher. So um, yeah, not really sure why she was like that. But yeah, I mean, uh, I, I think. Uh, giving them a home after, after almost running them over and uh, what was the right thing to do. Um, of course, that, that was the first time we got to see her uh, uh, run into the lake, which we'll, we'll see a bunch more times. <laughs> but that's the, first time, that's the first time she got out of the lake by herself, though. <laughs> Honestly, her character is is not as fleshed out as the, the other characters uh, uh, yeah. are. At least, at least until like we get to know her as a person. Right. Exactly. I mean, I mean, obviously they have her for the she's, love interest of, of, of. She's the rich man's daughter. And she's always of the inventor, but you know, I mean, how uh, they introduce her dress, in the beginning is, is a little weird. A little that weird. white dress. How she doesn't get it dirty while she's at the beach. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, that's a little later, but yeah. Uh, and then, uh, of course, Dick Van Dyke's character, he was just, he's always great, you know, uh, his, his, his dancing and, 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 you know, his, his singing and, and, you know, he reminds me a lot of, uh, like Danny Kaye, uh, in a way. Um, a little bit. 
you know, a little they, bit. They, 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 they definitely think. have some similar styles. Um, you know, uh, Danny Kay, I think is a little funnier, but, um, they both, they both, they both good. Um, I've always liked Dick Van Dyke. Uh, probably, I'd say the, the the biggest memory of him is Mary Poppins. Um, but I don't know. I've, I've been watching. I've probably watched just about everything. And of course, the Dick Van Dyke show was absolutely great. Absolutely loved that show too. Um, so yeah, I, I love his case character. Uh, he did a great job. He was definitely the nutty professor type, or you know, inventor. Um, you know, even even when uh, he realizes like uh, the candy they made that it works and stuff, he's like, "Oh, I made something that works!" And you know, just, <laughs> he was kind of surprised. He's like one of those inventors that that you know they just they've invented a bunch of stuff, but uh, nothing. It's like he's really like works. a Doc Brown kind of a character in here. Uh, uh, I was thinking more like uh, you remind me of the dad in Gremlins. Oh yeah, I was reminded of him as yeah. well. <laughs> um, of course, funnier, but yeah, um, yeah, but yeah, I guess he's kind of like uh, Doc Brown invented fucking a time machine, so you know, that's yeah. a, that's a that's a, that's a, that's, a that, that's a little bit of a bit of a stretch there because you know he, Not he really. a time machine. <laughs> he's got the do uh, he's got a dog that suddenly gave him his idea for, uh, for the whistling thing, you know? Well, but Doc yeah. Brown had a lot of experiments that didn't work either. Well, I think a lot of inventors, a lot of inventors do. Um, they just keep inventing things until they find something that works, you know? I mean, I guess, it, it, I mean, I can't imagine, I mean, you don't just invent something your first time and it's great and you become rich. I, I mean, I wouldn't imagine you know, I just had to try a bunch of uh, different things until you eventually uh, in, invent something that that's great. You know, like uh, I'm sure uh, was it Mike Dolan's from the Monkees. His mother invented uh, whiteout. Okay. <laughs> so, just well, what well, was the guy like, in Gremlins? What? Gremlins. What about Father him? had all those inventions. Yeah, that's right. I just I was just sent back. Yeah. yeah. That, that's yeah, that, that's what you reminded me of. About, that's I keep forgetting about, about gremlins. How can you forget about gremlins? Well, uh, oh, uh, I, uh, it wasn't as See many of the uh, films that uh, that uh, that some of you consider cult classics. Uh, and films that you grew up with, I didn't see until later. So Gremlins was more of a later f uh, f a film, especially number two, for, uh, uh, for me to uh, uh, to get into. Um, my, uh, my mom was often like, "Who? I, I can't remember who that." There was two versions of Gremlins too, one with Hulk Hogan showing up, and the other one I think was was Sylvester Stallone. I can't remember, but there's definitely was, two versions. Now, two the only thing I, think, I seem to be able to find is the Hulk Hogan version. Uh, which, of course, two, was my favorite because I was a huge fan. <laughs> Let's see. Two different versions of this film one for the theater, one for video. The difference is that in the theatrical version, it appears that the film begins to. Burn. However, in the video version, this segment is replaced by a segment which simulates a broken VCR machine. Okay, I didn't know about this. I didn't know about that either, but there's definitely two different versions with Who Comes on Save the Day, too. One, like I said, one is Hulk Hogan, the other is, is I think it was still a lot of alone, but. Hmm. Well, in any case, uh, we meet the fa uh, 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 father. Well, um, truly, uh, has taken the uh, taken and driven the children home, and uh, it, they have an interesting relationship at first because uh, uh, she's uh, he's on uh, uh, the cusp of. Uh, 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 being berated by her and 
uh, he starts to question his parenting on just a little bit, you know. He he does, yeah. That. Well, <laughs> he does, but he he does too because he uh, uh, he actually says out loud, you know, I, I think I've done pretty good, you know, as uh, yeah, he wasn't he wasn't questioning it. He was stating the fact that he does good as a father, and who the hell does she think she? Well, he didn't say hell, but you know who she thinks she is. <laughs> Yeah, no, yeah, he, uh, he, he was a good dad. Yeah, maybe he should have paid but, more attention to uh, the kids playing, you know, being in school and uh, not playing in the road. But you know, but to be <laughs> fair, it is a really small road and doesn't seem like uh, people travel on it very often. So, uh, yeah. And she sees a couple of his inventions uh, when she follows him, or. Walks into his inventing room, uh, which just so happens to be in uh, uh, in the barn, I guess, uh, what you would consider a barn, or uh, or underneath the silo. Just after she's destroyed his invention and puts the fire out. <laughs> <laughs> True. He wasn't happy when she put the fire out with. That's the right. Because uh, uh, that was an interesting introduction because he'd come out with, uh, strapped with a, ra a rocket on skis. And he, uh, and oh. he, lit, he, and lit. he got so far up and he thought that the thing had fizzled out. It wasn't going anymore. So he starts to come back and then the thing kicked back in. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> ultimately after that, uh, 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 that um whole section is when we meet um and in fact i think we meet uh the grandfather uh because he's always, always seems to go on adventures or see a safari into a, uh, the portable potty that, uh, that, uh, that apparently seems to be his vacation retreat <laughs> <laughs> what do you think about the grandfather? Well, he's kind of funny. <laughs> yeah, he's uh, he he looks kind of he looks kind of funny, and he just uh, acts kind of funny. But, uh, his uh, his work area is pretty small. <laughs> looks like an outer. <laughs> well. To me, he it kind of seems like he's like an ex-war hero. So, uh, uh, so he likes to play war games at, at, at times, um, and he's just kind of a goofball, you know, kind of a crackpot, you know. He's eccentric. He likes. That. Yeah. Well, they're both eccentric. <laughs> But um, in I'm any case, I think he's cutting him. I think he's, I think he's good for the family. I think he, you know. Oh yeah, I, I like him too. Well, yeah, he's a, and, he's a, lo he's a lovable widow. <laughs> and once the kids mm -hmm. end up uh, telling their dad about the car, uh, that's when he kind of makes a promise that uh, they'll do something about it and. Uh, and save the car from uh, from whatever, which means he's got to he's got to he's yeah. got to invent something. And unfortunately, mm -hmm. even though he invents something, uh, the first uh, that uh, that uh, invention um, <laughs> doesn't exactly take off right away. <laughs> no, oh, no. no the, the invention was 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 a bust, and it, it almost got <laughs> head busted. <laughs> I, I, don't, I, I can't say I blame the guy. You know, uh, of course, I would not have volunteered when 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 you know some um some kind of machine that's supposed to cut my ha hair hair was like put over my head. Um, no, thank you. <laughs> I was supposed to work. I'm good. So uh, of course, yeah. we, we we get the world's first mohawk. 
Uh, <laughs> and, and besides, uh, that well, it wasn't we, just a mo it was a mohawk, but then he still had the hairs on this on the side, a whole ring, and uh, it just it, it just made him look even funnier. You know, it looked like like he was being scalped, but they weren't finished yet. <laughs> Well, yeah. <laughs> this was the first thing that he did after after the whistle. Uh, uh, well, um, his dog actually figured out that it was uh, was in fact a, a whistle. I guess. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yes. and, and so he ended up taking it to um, scrumptious uh, a, a scrumptious factory. Which he didn't realize that truly scrumptious was the uh, the daughter of uh, the owner of this place, and he tries to pitch this whistle. Oh shit! Her uh, name is truly scrumptious. That's funny. I I, <laughs> I didn't realize her name. I kept saying, "What is her name, Julie?" Like I I couldn't hear what they were saying for some reason. Her name, so I wasn't sure what her name was. So. Uh, yeah, yeah but, her uh, name is truly scrumptious. That's that's pretty funny. <laughs> <laughs> it reminds me of, a, of an Austin Powers um, name. In fact, that, they uh, sing her a name. A G-rated version. Uh, the, uh, well, the his kids. first name, I can't say it. I, uh, Caractacus. Uh huh? Caractacus. Yeah, that's his first name, which is really off the wall. <laughs> oh, yeah, but the fact that her name is truly scrumptious is is pretty funny it's like say it's like a, it's like a g-rated austin powers name uh, for, uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and uh he he goes to the uh office of uh her father uh mr scrumptious um and uh we meet this like butler looking dude that, uh, that uh, seems to not really want him there. He's like really turn. Uh, if he's he's really like if he if he was in polite society, he would be the one uh, one looking down his nose at every uh, person beneath his stature. You know. Yeah, and he was just a, he was just like a like a man <laughs> serpent. So who the hell is he to look at down at people? <laughs> Uh, yeah, but I guess that's when Truly shows up and as uh, and uh, makes sure that he has an audience. And he uh, she tells him, uh, Caractacus, uh, to uh, uh, not let her father badger bully him, or... bully him. So he tries and he fails. And well, not his fault. <laughs> no, his, do uh, his, his dog brought a whole a whole thing of other dogs in to protect the place. <laughs> well, he's not really that great at advertising his own product. Uh, I thought this, I thought the song was pretty good. Oh, the to uh, uh, um, whoa, what was it? Uh, it was like um something toot. Too sweet, wasn't uh, it? Too, too, too yeah, sweet. too sweet. Too sweet. <laughs> <laughs> I thought the song was kind of cool, and then of course, uh, ultimately, all the dogs came in and uh, and ruined the factory. And the factory kind of reminds me of of an older um, uh, Doctor Seuss short film that I remember called Pontiful Puck. Where the heck are you? Um, uh, where there was a pickle factory. Uh, 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 for some reason, the factory in that kind of reminded me of this factory for so, uh, so, uh, some reason. Um, I don't know if any of you have seen th that short film, uh, 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 but Pontiple Buck. He... It, it reminded me of, uh, it reminded me of uh, like a Laurel and Hardy type uh, place, you know, something that worked in there or something. <laughs> Uh, let's push on the pull em and pull on the push em and the pickles go into the jar. Anyways, um, <laughs> going, uh, uh, go, uh, uh, going into this uh, 
uh, factory scene, uh, uh, scene. What did y'all think about uh, all the dogs coming in and ruining everything? Uh, uh, I have uh, uh, only one word that can uh, per perfectly convey Bra my opinion. Exactly. <laughs> Bravo. Bravo. So after he somewhat, uh, well, after that somewhat ruination of the factory is when, uh, when um, uh, Cacticus, um, Caracticus, he uh, yeah, goes to a carnival. A he, he, he goes to a carnival with one of his inventions, which he's evidently never tested out before, but he is. Uh, assured of himself, so he uh, advertises uh, for someone to uh, come to get their hair cut, and someone actually does. And, uh, well, it doesn't turn out very good. In fact, uh, the way that that, um, that bicycle, uh, the way he was using that bicycle reminded me of a moment in Willy Wonka in the Chaka Factory when he was bicycling um, uh, 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 on uh, something uh, in that particular movie, which is kind of we uh, uh, weird that Roald Dahl is the co-writer of this. So I wonder if they took and used that like particular bicycling moment and put it in Willy Wonka. As, Sounds like it. Uh, as, you know, something. Because it's just weird enough, you know. He's bicycling to gain the heat for this hair thing, you know. <laughs> uh, and it goes awry and uh, everybody notices his mullet. And uh, <laughs> uh, he <laughs> chases him, uh, and he uh, ends up getting thrown uh, food at him while he's trying to escape. And he ends up as part of this entertainment group of bamboo stickmen. Uh, what did y'all think about all, uh, 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 all of these bamboo dancers? It was fun. It, it, it was it was it was kind of funny how he ended up. Uh, I don't know what happened to the leader of, of it, but he uh, he ended up being the leader of the little group there. And <laughs> it was it, it's like you know realistically, how the hell would he know the number? Uh, <laughs> I mean, I guess, I guess maybe you've seen it before. Um, and they just never really s said that or whatever. But uh, so story wise, story wise, it didn't make too much sense. But uh, it was fun to watch. You know, I mean, it, it's a kids a kids movie, so you take it take it with a grain of salt. But you know, sometimes the story is a little loose on 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 uh, reasonings uh, for things. But yeah, it was it was it was a fun scene. I I liked it. And, uh, I thought it was fun, but I I was also reminded uh, of. Uh, how he danced in Mary Poppins with oh yeah uh, the, with them on the rooftop on the rooftop the, the other rooftop uh, the uh, city sweepers yeah um uh, so some of those routines were uh, were I think uh, stuff that he kind of did on um, uh, Mary Poppins but some of them were different and I I, I thought that uh, uh, that it was cool that it was all done with bamboo sticks, you know, and uh, um, ultimately at the end of this performance, he got enough money to buy back the car, which then he spent days. Um, I'm not even sure how many days he spent re uh, refurbishing the car. <laughs> I think he spent like three days or... Well, before they we pulled, um, before he pulled it out, the the kids had been saying that he had been there all been in there already three days. But you know, after they said that, you see him taking the that shroud from the fire place, and you take you see him taking the boat, and you know, it's like you 
you know, you don't under, you don't know that he's planning on building this car up. We're all thinking he's just trying to make this thing run. So why are you taking all this stuff? You know, because you don't know at the time that he's <laughs> what all that he's planning on doing. You know. Yeah. And ultimately, he does. Uh, uh, well, and I think we for, uh, forgot to mention one of his inventions. Uh, one of his inventions makes breakfast. Uh, and it makes sausages and e eggs and, uh, uh, and uh, uh, stuff. So, uh, so I thought that was a kind of a cool invention. It kind of reminded me of uh, like one of Doc Brown's invent uh, inventions where, uh, where it but makes But this one was cute because it would make the eggs and then they would come down the little chute and come right onto the table. You know, it's kind of neat. <laughs> what, whoever put that thing together had to have been a scientific person because uh, uh, that thing looked like it had a lot involved in, in making it work. <laughs> <laughs> Probably, yeah. <laughs> uh, it kind of reminds me of the old game Mousetrap <laughs> by Parker Brothers. Yeah. Uh, I remember that game. <laughs> in any case, uh, so uh, while they are waiting for their dad, a, a, a grandpa is using this machine to make them breakfast. and um, Ultimately, he comes out with the car. What do y'all think about the look of the car? I thought it was cool. I was like, wow. Oh, yeah. That, that explains why he took the boat and he took this and he took that. Because, like I said, all along, we thought he was only supposed to be making the thing run. He didn't seem sound like or seem like he was, like, rebuilding it. He said, I'm going to make it run, you know, when he took it into the barn. He did a lot more than mm. make it run. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was really great. And so great. he and so he suggests for them to have a picnic and take it out for a spin. And uh, they also, the kids, uh, uh, say, hey, can't we invite Truly? Well, I don't know. Uh, let's just uh, see, uh, see what happens. So, uh, so they're uh, they get in the car. Uh, they're waving at everyone as they're going by, uh, by, and they end up running into Truly, and she runs into the uh, the swamp again, or the pond, and uh, he ends up carrying her over to the car, and they end up uh, finding their way to the beach. And well, before that, the kids came up with the Chitty Chitty Bang Bang song. Correct, because um, they were listening to the pitter-patter of the uh, of the engine, and you could actually hear, barely, uh, uh, barely audible, that it did kind of sound like a Chitty Chitty Bang Bang was coming out of the engine. And so, they finished the song. Chitty Chitty Bang Bang, Chitty Chitty Bang Bang. And I like the fact that they sing it in a round, you know, it's like a magical. Well, yeah, when they when they meet up with Truly, they tell her about it and she listens. So then they start singing the song all over again. Yep. And get her into it. Yep. <laughs> and so they get her to, uh, they get her to the beach and it seems like they have some beach fun. In fact, uh, uh, this is uh, the time for montage uh, where they um, uh, they end up showing that uh, that uh, they uh, they are making sand castles, uh, they're uh, uh, they're um, burying uh, Dick uh, Dick Van Dyke's character in the sand, and uh, the boy's uh, feet are out the other end, so she's tickling his feet, uh, 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 and he's acting like they're his feet. <laughs> um, and uh, they end up having so, uh, some water fun, and uh, they're back in the car at the end of the of the afternoon, and that's when um, 
uh, the children start to talk about pirates and uh, 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 and they ask their dad, hey, can you tell us one of your pirate stories? And he turns around and says, hey, have you ever heard of the Baron Von Boom? Uh, the, uh, the illustrious Baron Von Boom. Uh, and uh, that's w uh, when... The yeah. head of Bulgaria. <laughs> yep. Who is actually looking f uh, uh, for the exact same car that uh, they, uh, uh, they are in. And so this is where reality mixes with unreality. Uh, be, uh, because we, we think that the reality is, is that, uh, that the story that he is telling actually becomes true. Be, uh, because we uh, we see uh, this baron uh, on this ship that uh, that sends these two uh, and I love how you uh, you uh, said um that parts of this reminded you, uh, you of Laurel and Hardy well there are some Laurel and Hardy characters that uh, are sent off the ship to uh find the inventor and and bring back the vehicle or at least bring back the inventor for the uh, for the baron well before that there's a nice little thing where we find out that the car can float and it can run on water and it has a nice little uh flotation device yeah. And uh, yeah. which then ma it makes it become a motor car on boat. <laughs> so which is that, that that thought that was pretty neat. They're, they're supposedly stranded on these rocks in the water, so they can't get the car going. And all of a sudden, it goes. It inflate that all inflates under, and the wheels the wheel wheels tilt and everything. And, then and uh, Caractacus uh, uh, acts like he didn't know that was in it. Right. <laughs> I think the car made it happen. And in that sense, the car reminded me of Herbie. Herbie, yep, me too. <laughs> of course. Except he wasn't. He was, Except uh, T T Bing Bing wasn't drunk. <laughs> <When he's> <laughs> <either>. <laughs> do but uh ultimately it's because of this flotation device that it got them to go back on land and uh meanwhile while they uh, they were uh, gallivanting on the road these uh, other two laurel and hardy characters bumbling uh, idiots yes yeah they, they try to uh capture uh, the vehicle, while well, they they in turn ca uh, capture her father, uh, <laughs> uh, Truly's father, because well, uh, uh, um, they they, tr they try to do a Looney Tunes type thing, which is uh, they they roll the canvas of a tunnel uh, over a, a rock or over another tunnel. And they make it look like something else. And they had, a, they, had a, they had a truck to capture, and uh, for some reason, her father was honking behind them, and, and she's like, "You better let him pass." And she's like, "Turn over here," and they turn up and let him pass, and you know, he gets captured instead. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so yep. it's definitely a roadrunner type thing, roadrunner. And then, uh, 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 <laughs> and then they, uh, they ultimately think that they have captured the inventor because they, uh, they think that uh, that their grandfather is said inventor. And uh, so uh, they uh, call in an airship and uh, cart his porta potty off with him. They call the Zeppelin. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they do call it a Zeppelin. Um. Uh, but they Just a bring little tip it see, that's that's where Led Zeppelin got their name. Basically, was Duh. Led Zeppelin. They were told somebody made a comment that they were like a like a lead balloon. They would never get off the ground. Yep, I knew that. <laughs> Just Whoa. a little tip. It. <laughs> that's true. So, uh, 
Led Zeppelin was named after this movie. No. No, they were named after, <laughs> they were named after the balloon, the Zeppelin. The Zeppelin's been around was around way before this movie. Oh. Oh. <laughs> I get it. But yeah, the, the giant it. balloon ship was called a Zeppelin. Not sure why it's called a Zeppelin. Uh, maybe someone's name was Zeppelin or something. Um, but yeah, it's called a Zeppelin. <laughs> well, in any case, this Zeppelin uh, uh, ta uh, takes uh, the grandfather back to Bulgaria, uh, uh, and he is told that, that if he doesn't invent what he wants him to invent, uh, uh, that he uh, he will face the executioner. <laughs> um, and he's left with these like five old fogies that, uh, that uh, see, uh, seem to have also been brought for various reasons and have never left the employ of the king and uh, the king uh, you mean the emperor well, uh, he the, is the he's baron. Kind of a, he, he, he's, he's the right baron, baron. Yeah. he's a baron okay well he's ro a royalty and he's in relation to the uh, to a king. He's a royal ass. Ah <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes, that's for sure. Did anybody notice how many times he tried to get rid of his wife? <laughs> oh yeah, uh, it, 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 yeah. His uh, thing with his wife kind of reminded me of the couple in the house on Haunted Hill. Yeah. <laughs> I, 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 I laughed my ass off when uh, when the this the, was the, this the, was actually even funnier though than that you know when, when the wife got when the wife got in the car and she's like we're gonna fly this is exciting and they push a button and she goes flying up in the air <laughs> and, then, and then he goes and then he goes to shoot shoot her down <laughs> it's just absolutely hilarious <laughs> it's so it hilarious. <laughs> Meanwhile, Caractacus and uh, Truly and the kids have, uh, 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 while the grandfather was being kidnapped, uh, they uh, uh, followed him in Chitty Chitty Bang Bang and uh, ultimately, um, short, uh, shortly uh, after the clip scene is where we get an intermission, where I don't know if... Uh, if you, if you were in the theater, uh, if you saw that moment where they were just about to uh, to hit some uh, iceberg or cliffs, um, what would you have thought? <laughs> oh no! <laughs> oh. <laughs> it was it was, it was oh, yeah, it. I, I think I remember. I think I remember uh, going to a few movies when I was younger that actually had intermissions like that. Um, they they got rid of that quick, but I remember, I think I remember that uh, when I was young. They did that in the drive-in too, if I, I recall. They had intermissions. Uh, in well, West Side Story has an intermission. I know um, uh, Ben Hur has an intermission. Um, at, at, at least the original, uh, the the one with uh, um, uh, Charlton Heston. Uh, that one has an intermission. Uh, yeah, they did a uh, they did a remake, uh, and there was a silent film version of Ben Hur too. So technically, Ben Hur is a remake. So, uh, but uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, but uh, after the intermission, we uh, are then uh, realizing that the car can actually fly because uh, he pushes. Uh, Caractacus pushes a button, and suddenly you see uh, wings come out uh, from the car, and they are, in fact, flying. Uh, and somewhere in the midst of this whole airship flying to Bulgaria, they get rid of their bumbling idiots uh, in the water because of their... Uh, their um, they're bad. No, they got rid of them because they were too much weight. <laughs> they need the they they were throwing out everything out of the balloon of uh, the zeppelin that weighed something, so that they could get up higher because 
their cargo was getting drowned in the water. <laughs> so they had to eliminate some weight. So they are, uh, they pretty much either fall out or jump out. And, uh, Chew me and yeah. them. <laughs> they, yeah. <laughs> um, literally. Uh, so ultimately, they also end up landing in Bulgaria. And when they get outside of their vehicle, they realize there's not much people in town. In fact, there's uh, someone who notices uh, them, a local toy maker who, who who says that they should leave. Well, the, the because... first guy no, the first guy notices them, and they go to ask him a question. He just runs off, and then they notice that there's people there, but there's no children, as they actually mentioned. Uh... <laughs> And that's when the toy maker, uh, actually the toy maker told them to, to come in, inside because he knew that the uh, there would be, uh, the kids would be caught, so. And the toy maker is yeah. not, none other than Benny Hill, um, who, as we know, had a show um, uh, with the Thames Theater. Um, and uh, uh, what do we think about uh, the toy maker as a character. He was a great character. I liked him. He was, he was kind of like a like a Santa Claus type character, you know. Um, <laughs> totally, I uh, think that they got the idea from Santa Claus for the toy maker. Um, you know, definitely uh, cares about the cares about all, all children and loves to make these toys and you know, basically uh, he's on. <laughs> He's, he's his only job now is make toys for the Baron, who obviously probably can't stand like everybody else, and, and uh, you know, but uh, he, he's a great cat guy. I enjoy him. I, I thought he was fun. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he was cool, and he played an important part in uh, uh, what was eventually done with the Baron, which was <laughs> very good. <laughs> Yeah. Well, yeah, ultimately he ends up taking uh, oh, um there is a character in here that I should men uh, mention is the child kidnapper. Um the child uh, Oh. Yeah. What do you think about that character? He's all dressed in black. He's he's got a net um and he's looking for uh, uh, kids that he knows are around. And he's got the uh, he's got he's got a honker that can smell out kids. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no. The, uh, for today's standards, he is uh, probably uh, even scarier than he would have been back then. I imagine. Well, and for this particular er, m a moment, uh, 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 I guess the parents are dressed up like toys. They um, all were. The jack they boxes. all were. And, yeah, they were uh, all jack and boxes, which I thought was so great. He popped all the boxes and they all popped up like jack and boxes. He <laughs> 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 <You, you laughs> couldn't tell it was it, it was people, but <laughs> I thought oh, it was yeah, good. that was good. <laughs> And, and ultimately, I guess the children are found out and and uh, they are locked away in one of the Baron's ro uh, room, uh, rooms. Uh, what did y'all think about that moment when the kids were captured? Uh, it reminded me of uh, the saying of uh, don't, don't get don't go into a van being offered for candy. Uh, <laughs> which is, ba which is yeah. basically basically what it was. Uh, it was a wagon instead of a van, but you know it, it was it was a jail in, in disguise. So uh, yeah, definitely. Uh, the, the the girl said, you know, we we should we should wait, and the boy was like, no no no, and then the girl ended up going with the bo little boy. But uh, yeah, they definitely were thinking with their uh, their tummies and not their 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 brains there <laughs> on that one. So. Uh Indeed, like she freaking told them not to go anywhere and they knew they were in danger, yet they still went out and uh, candy and uh, ice, you know, candy uh, and ice cream. You gotta get candy and ice cream. <laughs> 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 uh, 
Yeah, I wouldn't hear you. You don't how understand the words, no. That little, that little jail thing, you know, that cart, how he decked it out, though, that was pretty neat, you know? Oh, yeah. I mean, it, it, it looked, but, but the thing is, even when they were running out, you know, before the guy even noticed that they were there, all the people were like, no, kids, come back, kids, come back. Like, all the people were trying to warn the kids, like, don't fall for it, you know. And, you know, they were just not paying attention, nothing. They just wanted their, their ice cream and candy. <laughs> <laughs> and ultimately, ultimately, Caractacus and Truly find themselves in the dungeon of the Baron. And they realize that uh, th this is where all the kids of the town have kind of like ended up. You know, yeah, they're in they're in the tower, and so uh, they talk to uh, they talk to the kids and say, uh, say "Hey, how would you li uh, uh, like to uh, to help us on the a Baron's day. birthday? Uh, make it a birthday he will never forget." <laughs> yeah, it's the Baron's birthday tomorrow. Oh, Woo! <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, the father the is there. The um, Baron is trying to get him to um, equip that a car like the other one, and then yep. he's they're trying to get him to do that. And then they, when they find the kids, is when they find the actual car and they bring it. Uh, Tammy, uh, you said something about uh, about the rocking horse or the horse that uh, that he. Uh, that the king had um, the the pl a plastic horse. Uh, 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 the plastic me. horse. Oh yeah, that horse. horse. The uh, the plastic horse that actually moves. The the plastic horse that was a wooden horse that moves. Yeah. Well, when I was a kid and I saw that part, I wanted one of those. Me too. <laughs> 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 but that was better than my wooden horse. My my, my wooden horse only rocks back and forth. <laughs> so now it is Karen's birthday, and the toy maker is brought in, and he does some groveling, and he's like, "Get on with it, you know. Uh, uh, bring in what you got, uh, what you brought me." So he he says, "Bring in the Baron's toys." So in is carried two boxes, and uh, inside uh, uh, one is truly. And at first the Baron is like, "What the fuck is this?" You know, and, and he's like, "Well, it's not just any normal doll." So he cranks the uh, sucker, and she starts singing the song that the children had sung to her earlier uh, while they were at the beach. They actually sung this song. Um, so she sings, truly scrub sis, uh, you know, <laughs> and uh, she's all mechanical, too. I, I love how she's kind oh, of mining. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, I was about to say that uh, that performance was, uh, uh, I don't know, amazing. I mean, uh, uh, it must have taken one hell of an effort to uh, learn to do all those movements. The way she was doing it to look like a mechanical doll, I was like, wow. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, which this uh, brings into uh, to, uh, mind that um this actress wasn't just an actress I, I think that she was also talented you know just as ta uh, talented as uh good Van Dyke. yeah um uh, 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 to be able to do a street performance like that you know uh, uh, uh yeah. which, is, which is often what uh, uh, whenever i've come across mimes in the streets this is the type of thing that they uh, they end up doing, which is robotic movements, you know, uh, uh, for money. But uh, but this was 
a really good, a, a good performance, I think, on her uh, part because uh, in, in able to well, get those sounds uh, 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 to go exactly when she moved her parts, you know? <laughs> Because <laughs> you heard cr cranking and and shit like that, and then uh, what do we think about uh, Dick Van Dyke as a Jack in uh, 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 Jack in the Box? Uh, I doctor? think he did great because he just he has that he has that ability as an actor to just act off like that, and since he's so tall and skinny, you could he could just right. fumble around, you know? Yeah. It's funny how he's like, he looks like he's gonna fall and he doesn't. He's like rolling around and stuff. It's yeah, he does a does such a great job uh, dancing around and stuff. Um, yeah, the the two of them together made made quite quite the show. Oh yeah, I agree. Uh, uh, this is probably the best part of the film, to be honest. Uh, 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 I, 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 it's my second favorite scene. Um, but, um, ultimately, uh, this is when, uh, they, uh, they, uh, cue the kids to come in and that's when they drop a hook and, um, uh, <laughs> Caractacus is able to hook the king onto this hook. And it's funny because he says, I could leap for joy and suddenly he's, uh, hoisted uh, above in the air and he's swinging back and forth and that's when uh, 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 the trouble ensues, ensues where the kids start fighting back and then you see that the town's uh, people hur uh, hurry and rush in with pitchforks and, uh, and knives and shit like that and, uh, and uh, <laughs> also they, uh, they end up going and Finding where the kids are and grabbing them, and then of course, uh, ultimately, Chitty Chitty Bang Bang comes into the castle on their on its own, and uh, as, uh, and then of course, uh, grandfather shows up uh, like 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 he didn't uh, to me grandfather. I don't know. He was just in the right place at the right time. <laughs> uh, it, it, it just seemed kind of like coincidental that he just suddenly showed up when the car like was there, you know? It was like, oh, really? Uh, they didn't have to like go searching for him? <laughs> but uh, um, Oh, yeah. Uh, go ahead. Oh, uh, I was going to say, uh, yeah, I think we forgot to mention that scene when uh, uh, he was trying to uh, get a car to fly with the help of those uh, uh, slaves of the Baron or whatever they were. And they uh, apparently managed to put something together and then it just went spudow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that did it did uh, happen, and also they uh, have the moment where the child catcher was caught too. Um, oh, that was yeah, I love that. I love that scene. At first, the the, the child catcher is moving at the kids, and they're backing away. Then all of a sudden, they move forward, and he tries to back away, and they get him in the corner, and they get him in the in the net, and they tie him up, and, and that, that was great. I think that the, the kids. When the kids all came in and they dropped the nets, they did everything and they and everything. I thought it was great because you know they they won overall, all of them. You know, it, it kind of reminded me a little bit of the scene in uh, Court Jester when all the, uh, the 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 midges show up and 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 uh, help save uh, the day uh, with the with the. Oh uh, yeah, yeah, good yeah, notice. Kind of. Good noticing. A little bit. I can see why you uh, you would say that. And then ultimately, I guess uh, that's uh, uh, that's when um, the Baron and his wife, um, well, his wife suggests for them to go down the chute for the dungeon, and uh, uh, they pretty much fall down. He loses his crown along the way, and uh, they get all caged up. 
<laughs> He's falling down and lost his crown. <laughs> and uh, that's when we have uh, Chitty Chitty Bang Bang flying them away. Um, it kind of reminded me of uh, when Dorothy was flying away in the air balloon in Wizard of Oz just a little bit. Um, oh. uh, or something to that effect or uh, it kind of reminds me of i don't know uh, know if you know the movie with babes in toyland love it you mean the uh, uh oral nardy one or uh the other one kind of uh, uh kind of both of them but uh, but uh, but uh i know the 80s version definitely had a moment where where uh, where uh, at the end that uh, uh she was fl uh, flying away from them you know so, um, but, uh, yeah, uh, in fact, uh, the toy maker is kind of similar to like, uh, one of the characters in Babes in Toyland as well. So I could see some similarities. Yeah, the toy maker. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> well, like I said, uh, Santa Claus, you know, it, it definitely... Yep. So uh, ultimately, that is when we re uh, we realized that th all of this, uh, th this world and everything, has just been a story that uh, that uh, Caractacus was telling the kids on the beach. <laughs> oh yeah, I must admit, uh, I must admit that was a bit of a downer for me. <laughs> and. Uh, Ultimately, uh, he drops uh, truly off at her place. They kind of have an argument, and uh, they ultimately go home. And that's when they realize that her father's car is at their their place of residence. And uh, they walk in, and lo and behold, they're playing war games. Uh, the grandfather and him, uh, uh, Mister Scrubbers. And that's when he t uh, tells them, yeah, um, your uh, invention, well, uh, Toot Sweets, well, we found out that, uh, that, yeah, it wasn't the greatest for people, but it certainly, it, 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 it certainly uh, made good for pets. So you are about to be a, a rich man. So why don't you sign here? And he and he, he's like, hold that thought. So he, he goes he, back. He runs, back. runs out to get truly. <laughs> yep. Who's already on her way? She runs her off the road. <laughs> runs her off the road again. That was that third or fourth time now. <laughs> and this she, time she next says, year. Oh, I <laughs> and uh, I guess it's not that ba uh, uh, bad an idea for us to get married. She's like, oh, oh, okay. Uh, and then they kiss and they live happily ever after. Ah! <laughs> of course. Well, well. <laughs> not before. Not before <laughs> they had. And they have they have their road tri uh, trip in the air. Yeah, but they, they did it. There was there was this one scene where the kids said that um that they, they need to they, they need to get married when he says needs to they need to kiss first and uh, then uh, when when they kiss um the the, the girl is like oh well now you have to marry me <laughs> and I thought <laughs> that I thought that was cute. I yeah, that, I thought that was cute. Oh yeah, yeah, and uh, it, it's reciprocated in the end. There, 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 because they uh, after they kiss, um, uh, they're like, "Well, I guess we have kind of have to get married now, huh?" Well, no, you said you'll have to marry. Me. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, but um, they get in chitty chitty bang bang and uh, and. At the end, uh, they, uh, there they—I'm not even sure they realize that the car is floating in the air. So, uh, so uh, the movie makes it uh, seem like they're reality. driving, along and then next thing you know, they're flying. <laughs> yep. <laughs> so it makes you wonder whether what happened was in fact something that really happened. You know? Oh. That uh, that car is really magic way, to begin with. 
in a way maybe yeah although uh, although a part of me is kind of disappointed by the idea that uh, the most interesting part of the movie actually never happened well but then again uh, throughout i'm sorry what did you say i said well um as far as we know it didn't happen but uh, but in the imagination of the children it might have i mean uh, to me, that whole entire fairy tale w uh, was told as if from the imagination of a child. To me. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, throughout that part, I was kind of wondering if in that uh, Bulgaria it was apparently illegal to have children how did their nation not go extinct? That's and, what I was uh, thinking, dude. Exactly what I was thinking. I'm like, the oh, idea how, that how how are they gonna <laughs> how are they gonna continue without any kids? <laughs> right. Yeah, the idea that uh, the whole story actually never happened is uh, the only plausible explanation to that. <laughs> <laughs> or, or, or or you know, the, the, as kids, they have to be slaves, and once they're they're old enough, then they're released into the into the regular workforce. <laughs> oh yeah, uh, I was thinking it might be something like that. Uh, but well, yeah, uh, the toy maker said that they hid all the kids there. Is what he said. He said they've been hiding them there ever since it became law that they could not have children. They've been hiding them all there so that the, they could not be taken away from them. Yep. Oh, uh, yeah. So, uh, apparently, Ali, it looks like the, uh, those two kids were, in fact, the uh, uh, only two kids that were ever caught. Because <laughs> uh, I didn't see anyone else that uh, that was caught or anything like that, so... They must have hid all of their ki uh, kids away when once that ban came, so that the child catcher couldn't catch them. That's what uh, that's what I'm thinking. Mm -hmm. uh, to protect their children from the child catcher. <laughs> but uh, mm -hmm. in any case, did anyone want to say anything about the production, Crow? What did you think about the production? I thought it was pretty pretty damn good. I mean, uh, you know, it looked like the uh, car was 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 uh, you know became like a boat in in the ocean, and then it looked like it was flying. And um, you know, like you said at the end scene where they're driving along, and it looks like they're still driving, and they're already floating, and then flying and stuff. And you know, I think uh, they did a really good job with uh, with it. You know, um, obviously there was a lot of uh, goofy scenes in in the in the in the movies, but uh, everything everything was just well done. Uh, it was enjoyable, and um, you know, it, it was just a really fun kids movie. Okay, uh, what about you, Boris? Uh, what did you think about the production of this film? Well, I also thought it was good. Uh, there were some. Uh... Uh, pretty amazing moments and uh, the way they uh, put it all together like uh, the flying car and everything and uh, those scenes with the zeppelin and so on i imagine nowadays it probably wouldn't be so difficult to make but back then it probably was and uh, yeah, the part when they were pretending to be dolls, that was uh, really well done. I was uh, quite impressed by that. Alrighty, uh, what about you, Tammy? Uh, what did you think about the production of this film? I thought the production was really good. It seemed, it seemed very realistic, especially for its time, you know? They didn't have the computers and stuff to do things like we do nowadays. <clears throat> so I think they did yeah. a really good job of making everything seem very real. And, you know, the scenery and everything for everything I thought was just great. And then especially when they got to the castle, the cat, you know, when you saw the castle from above and everything, that was, mm -hmm. it looked really neat. 
you know, and then the whole water and everything around it. I thought the scenery, even at the house and everything, they did a really good job of having really nice background scenery for everything. Besides. Yep. Yep. <clears throat> And I thought the production was pretty good too. Uh, I thought that uh, that uh, the inventions that uh, that um, you saw in the very beginning all looked like they could have been something. <laughs> uh, his invention of the sausage and egg egg uh, maker <laughs> wouldn't be a bad thing to have in the house. Um, I mean, I certainly Italy would love to not uh, not be the one to uh, put uh, crack the eggs, <laughs> um, <laughs> especially since I'm so messy at cracking them. <laughs> um, Do you cause a lot of? Use a spoon. I'm sorry. Uh, Do you cause a lot of spudals when you do that? Cammy, <laughs> what? Look at what again? Uh, do I cause a lot of spudals cracking eggs? Um, let's not get into that. <laughs> Use the spoon. <laughs> you mix, you mix up with eggs. It's uh, the eggs are on the stove. They're running down the front of the oven. They're on the floor. I used to be like that, and then I learned how to do it. So. <laughs> use a use use a spoon. Use a tea, use a teaspoon and crack crack the egg and then and then break it over into the frying pan. I don't know what he does. All I know is then you don't then you don't there. then you don't lose the egg anywhere and you don't break the yolk, <laughs> which is the most important <laughs> thing when making eggs. Unless you're making scrambled, then it don't matter. Well, I don't break, I break the yolk when uh, when, uh, when I crack eggs. That uh, that's not the point. Uh, point. It's uh, uh, when I did I, not break I, the I yolk. You got you got egg all over the place. <laughs> I don't know what he does. All I know is if he's made anything with eggs, it's clean the stove, clean the um the oven door, clean the floor. <laughs> <laughs> But in any case, <laughs> if you um, ask me, that's not very excellent. I <laughs> enjoy uh, the oh, speaking of eggs words, uh, there's also an exit music part at the end of the credits. I don't know if you remember, um, remember seeing that. That was music that was meant uh, meant for, uh, for when you were leaving the theater. Uh, theater music that was being played uh, played so that you could exit the theater. Oh, uh, oh yeah, yeah, I did notice it uh, after the ending credits. So if you saw the exit music, uh, <laughs> uh, that was okay. I didn't think of that. <laughs> you know what, Dave? You're starting to be a bad egg. <laughs> no, uh, uh, Veronica from, uh, from Willy Wonka was the bad egg, and her father says he followed after her. Okay, but, uh, enough, <laughs> enough, enough, enough of your, enough of your egg yolks. <laughs> Unfortunately, and you know what I the sad thing is, think of... this egg sandwich that he makes is actually really good. I just hate asking him to make it because. He makes a mess the size. <laughs> <laughs> All he does is put God's powder, and everyone knows God's powder is what makes egg salad good. <laughs> but uh, in any case, I really enjoy the moments w when uh, the, uh, the uh, that Dick Van Dyke and um, and uh, truly are. Uh, uh, our dolls uh, or Jack in the Boxes. I love that moment. I love I love the mo a moment that they come out of the bo uh, box. I, I think uh, that uh, that production wise, they set that up to look really good. Uh, I mean, um, in order to pull that off, they've got to have a, a, a specific thought process in mind how to have the set designed in a way, a way so that it won't look clunky you know and it, it looked spectacular to me um 
Mit der I am. Mit der um, I imagine that well, there a lot of the flying moments and a lot of the uh, the boat moments. Yeah, I could tell that the, uh, those were like done in front of a screen, uh, where it's uh, where they had a mechanical car like moving side to side with a screen behind it. Um, oh yeah, but uh, except for the pictures, time. you know, when he is when the car is a boat and it's actually running around that boat, and you see there. There's the scenes when it's moving and it's on the you can tell it's on water. Yeah, they did. Uh, they did create something so that it, it was more like a speedboat, you know, right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, with the flotation device or whatever. Or maybe they just, uh, yeah, uh, but uh, but that was cool. Um, and uh, yeah, um. I, I liked the look of the castle. I liked the look of the dungeon. That was kind of uh, kind of neat. Um, I, 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 there was a moment uh, where, like, all the people of royalty were dancing, and they looked like the, uh, 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 they were like these, like, uh, like they didn't like to be around each other. <laughs> kind of look. <laughs> uh, because uh, 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 I swear, I swear, this one guy he had like a sourpuss lo uh, look while he was dancing with his partner, and I was like, hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so but uh, in any ca uh, case, uh, I think we've d uh, done that. What uh, what did you think about the music? Ooh, that was pretty good. And I enjoyed it, and like, like I said, though all, all the music, even in that silly song, the uh, Baron and the Baroness saying "coochie coochie," <laughs> that was kind of silly, but you know, it, it was a little catchy and, and, and fun. Um, well, that was yeah. that that one was the one where they through the whole song he was trying to get rid of his wife. That's what made it even better. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, it was. It was I mean, all the music was was great. Um, Especially, like I said, the Chi Chi Bang Bang. Uh, that's uh, I've never forgotten that uh, over all the years since I've seen it. You know the the Chi Chi Bang Bang song. You know Chi Chi Bang Bang, we love you. Chi Chi Bang Bang, we love you. <laughs> well, these, these are the names of the songs that were uh, uh, were on the soundtrack. Uh, there there was Blue Devils, which was music by uh, by Charles Williams. There was the first song called You Two, uh, which was written by Robert B. Sherman and Robert. M. Sherman's, uh, 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 but uh, performed by uh, Dick Van Dyke, Heather Ripley, and Adrian Hall. Um, then there was Toot Sweets, which was written by the Sherman br uh, brothers as well. Uh, then there was Hushabye Mountain, which uh, was written by, uh, by uh, the Sherman brothers as well. Me Old Bamboo, which was written by the Sherman brothers as well. Chitty Chitty Bang Bang, um, and then, uh, then Truly Scrumptious. Uh, uh, of course, we forgot about uh, about the song that uh, uh, Stelly Ann House uh, sings uh, 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 called Lovely Lonely Man, which was right after, I guess, she'd been uh, dropped off. Uh, and she, Or actually... Yeah, when she first met, um, uh, after she had the day at the beach with him, she called him a lovely, lonely man. And then, of course, Posh, The Roses of Success, Choochy Face, Doll on the Music Box, and uh, and Truly Scrumptious put together. And then uh, Happy Birthday, uh, which uh, was performed by Gertie... Uh, Frobe, and then Rule Britannia, which was written by Thomas Augustine Arne and James Thompson. So those were, uh, were uh, those was the music. Um. So you you all got uh, got a taste of the uh, the uh, the music from uh, from the uh, from that. Um. I do want to mention that this was uh, this film was nominated for an Oscar. 
Um, it, it was for best music original song. It was nominated. It didn't win an Oscar, but uh, but it also was a, go a Golden Globe nominee uh, for best original score and best original song, and I guess it was also a nominee for Golden Laurel uh, for the musical category. So those are some of the awards that it it, it, uh, it won. Um, who? Uh, okay, now we should uh, talk about favorite scenes. Boris, if you could, uh, if you could take a, a, a favorite scene or favorite scenes from this movie, what would it be? Uh, probably the scene where the uh, character Kusen truly were performing as dolls uh, and uh, everything that uh, resulted from that. <laughs> And I also liked the various spud out scenes throughout the movie. Okay. If um, you all know by now what spud out means, it's what if, an what even if joke. <laughs> <laughs> what about you, Tammy? Uh, if there was a favorite scene or favorite scenes from the film, what would you uh, what would you take from it? Um. Well, one of my favorites, well, when the car, both times that the car transforms, I love those scenes when it becomes a boat and when it starts to fly, of course. <laughs> you know, I think that was really great. And I think how they did it was really good. And um, I really do like that scene too, with truly being the, the doll. She did that, so, you know, so well, you know. That, the, you know, to me, that was very good acting on her part, you know, to pull that off. So. Okay. Yeah. Uh, what about you, Kroll? Uh, if there was a favorite scene or a favorite scene that you could take from this film, what would you take from it? Well, I also did love that scene where uh, they were, uh, you know, dancing and, and at the end, you know, when she, she was the... Marrying that, and and it was the, it was the other thing uh, that was really enjoyable. But my favorite scene has to be uh, when uh, the uh, Baroness goes flying in the air um, from the car. You know, he pushes the button and she goes flying, and uh, she's floating up there. And then her, her, the Baron grabs a shotgun and he's trying to shoot her down. <laughs> It was just, it was really hilarious. It's just absolutely hilarious. Uh, uh, was, and I definitely did enjoy all the, all this, this, the scenes where they they change into a boat and then, and then flew. Everything obviously those those were spectacular. Um, but yeah, I just uh, I love that scene where she just goes flying. She's like, oh, this is so exciting. And then he put he says, try this button. And he pushes this button and she goes flying up in the air. <laughs> I just cracked up laughing uh, when I saw that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure I laughed uh, a lot when I was a kid as well, but um, I didn't remember it. Like I said, uh, it had been a long time since I saw it. So, um, yeah, at this time, it was like uh, almost seeing it for the first time. So I, I cracked up. <laughs> she, she definitely are, deserved it. <laughs> there are so many favorites in this movie for me. Oh, yeah, um, there definitely is a lot of great uh, if, uh, From the moment that he shaved the dude's head and his reaction to that, to uh, 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 the uh, changing moments of the car, to the... Uh, the uh, parts of the marionette and the Jack in the Box to the Jack in the bo uh, 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 Box moment where where they uh, they all are cranked out of their boxes, <laughs> um, and I don't know. Um, I, I just enjoy um, a lot of those moments, and. Uh, it's it's hard to pick just one. I, I think uh, one of my favorite moments, uh, even th uh, though it's a close tie, I like 
the grandfather when he's uh, singing in the port uh, porta potty while he's uh, 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 in the air. He, he just uh, he looks like he's gonna fall from that fucking thing, you know. <laughs> He's just dangling there uh, in the porta potty and like yeah, that was what, a little scary. <laughs> what, what would I have thought if I was sitting on the john and suddenly it were t uh, taken up in the air and I'm still sitting there with uh, it, you know, with my my bare moon showing, you know? <laughs> well, that was yeah, that was that, you that, just show your moon all the time. That was that was a, that was. A <laughs> That was actually his workshop. Uh, it wasn't. It wasn't an outhouse, even though it looked like an outhouse. Uh, yeah. It looked like an outhouse, though. Uh, it, 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 and I think that it, it that was a general idea for uh, other people to think that all all he did was go in there and and like sit on the john, you know. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, in any case, uh, uh, anything else that anyone wants to uh, say anything about? Mm. All right. Uh, well, in any case, thank you for a hey, what's up, uh, ba uh, ba uh, Bass Films. Uh, thank you for listening. Um, but um, hopefully you enjoyed our. Um, discussion on this film uh it's been a pleasure uh, uh talking about this movie it's i i, I guess i when i always forget about this film uh because uh, it is an odd duck it is a weird film but it's also a very enjoyable film so if you have not seen the film uh go out and see it i mean it is it is a fantastic production, I think. I mean, it's uh, one of those ones where you surprisingly, <laughs> surprisingly um, find that it is unique, and uh, I like the fact that there, uh, there's, you know, the role doll and uh, the the James Bond element behind this film, you know. Uh, Ian Fleming, because it it, it, it it says that Ian Fleming presents this film, you know. So, um. Uh, oh yeah, that that name sounds familiar from somewhere. Cause he's he's the writer of. Any... He's the writer of James uh, James Bond. He's the writer behind the novels of James Bond. Oh. Ah. Oh, oh yeah. But in any case, like, share, and subscribe, and hopefully you'll be on with us next week as we uh, cover Bonnie and Clyde versus Dracula, if I remember correctly. Oh. <laughs> and also this that will Tuesday, be interesting. This next Tuesday starts my uh, my month on Inside Movies Galore. If you'll join us Tuesday night. Where we will be co uh, be covering the fin uh, Finnish film, uh, Bunny the Killer Thing. So thank you for listening. <laughs> uh, uh, what uh, uh, you thought of the film, what you thought of our discussion, and hopefully you just enjoy the rest of your day. And uh, we'll be covering more films in, in the future. So thank you so much, and uh, it's been a pleasure. Uh, in any yeah, case, thank you so much. Say good night. Good night. Good, good night. <laughs>